Hello and welcome to Stocks Down Under. My name is Mark Kennis and today we're joined by Simon Raffel, the CTO of Archer Materials. Good morning, Simon. Hi, good morning, Mark. Um, Simon, we've got a lot of questions about the technology, uh, about Archer. But before we do that, before we jump in, um, should we address the departure of uh, Mohamed Kucher? Um, that was a couple of months ago. Can you sort of fill us in, um, in, in sort of a little bit of background there, uh, what, what's happening and um, and what the company looks like basically without Mohammed? Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, look, Mohammed, um, sort of, you know, he was here for seven years as CEO. I mean, during that time, he did a great job of bringing um, the technologies to Archer and and sort of pushing the development through on those. Um, and I think probably more importantly, um, along with Greg, the, the executive chairman, they did a great job of building the infrastructure and the team here. Um, and as a result, we've got a strong company that isn't sort of reliant on sort of single source, sources of resources and people. Um, and then since I joined six months ago in February, I've been overseeing the tech development of both of those technologies. So the, the biochip and the 12 CQ quantum chip. Um, and that's been somewhat independent of Mohammed. So, you know, since his departure in July, there's there's sort of no hindrance to to continuing to build on that development, um, which is great. And I'm excited about both technologies, excited about working with the great team we have here. Right. And is it um I'm assuming that company will be looking to replace him as a CEO? Uh or can you can you talk a little bit about that? What what the plans are there? Um, look, he's officially CEO until until early next year, I think. Um, you know, he's disengaged from from his from his activities. But um yeah, I mean that that'll be something in the future that we'll look at. All right. Um and Simon, you're now the CTO of Archer Materials. Um tell us a little bit about your, your background and your experience. Yeah, okay. So um I mean, I've had about prior to Archer, I've had about 13 years experience working predominantly in the in the semiconductor industry, a lot of that um, based in the US. Um, before that, I started out life as an academic. So my first tour of Australia, if you like, I was I was a researcher at the ANU in Canberra. Um, and a lot of that work I did there was based on electronic materials, including um, a, a lot of semiconductor work. Um, from there, I sort of stepped out of academia into, into industry, moved to the US and joined a company called Applied Materials, who are the world's leading equipment supplier for, for, for the world's chip makers. Um, so I was there for about 10 years, worked on lots of R&D projects, um, focused towards their core business of, of sort of logic and memory customers, um, but also looking outside of that as part of the company's growth. Um, the latter part of the time there, the last six to seven years, was was my role there was leading some engineering teams on process development and hardware development, and that was taking an R and D project through early productization years, getting it into into sort of fabrication plants at companies like Intel and Samsung, and then taking that through to a high volume manufacturing tool. Um, after that, we, myself and fam my family decided to relocate back to Australia and, and the role I took up there was with Microsoft. That was within their quantum development program. And my role here in Sydney was leading the fabrication team as a principal hardware manager. Um, and what that, that entailed was developing components to build a quantum computer. And those ranged from superconducting devices for, for readout and control through to qubits, through to developing advanced packaging processes. So you can take, you know, a, the components and actually build them into some scalable um, machine. Um, and then just prior to joining Archer in February, I spent about eight months at the University of Sydney as a quantum and semiconductor engagement manager and um, part-time as a technical advisor for the newly established New South Wales Semiconductor Services Bureau. All right. And that's when, I guess, Archer snapped you up because uh, Archer is, is working with them as well, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Clever move. Um, so yeah, it sounds like there's a, it's almost seamless sort of you know experience uh, com compared to what Archer needs, right? So it looks like a, a great match if looking in from the outside. So um, you had an announcement last week um, uh, around the uh, the one two CQ chip, um, but maybe at a high level, can you sort of update us 
on where we are now, both with the one two CQ, but also with the biochip. Yeah, 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 sure. Um, I'll start with the biochip. Um, so the biochip project, and right now I would say it's in a really exciting phase. Um, we're, we're, we're sort of ramping up applications development around the technology. So historically for the last year or two, you know, the company's focused on looking at graphene transistors as a, as a sensor base. Um, working on design development there and working on establishing a, a supply chain essentially from from foundries that produce this material. And I'd say we've we've sort of completed or at least finished that that part of the project and there's a line of sight to to high volume manufacturing of the devices themselves. Um, so yeah, now it's time to move to a phase to actually build applications around that and, and build the sensing capability on that technology platform. Um, so as you've probably seen in recent announcements, the team has started looking at um, building actually, you know, actual sensors around the technology. And we've taken first steps, for example, to functionalize the transistor, which is a process of taking an extremely sensitive device that's sensitive to everything to put to building some materials on top of that that then make it selective to the particular biomarker that we want to capture and analyze. Um, and a first application that was that, that we discussed in one of the announcements was um, sensing potassium levels in blood, and that's primarily directed to um, kidney disease patients. Um, in addition to, to that technical work, um, which will be leading towards building real demonstrator devices that we can then start to take to customers and eventually hook a lead customer. Um, there's a lot of activity now on building collaborative relationships. So, you know, this is a big project. It's something Archer cannot do alone. So, you know, we've been, we've been reaching out and engaging with other companies that are in the area that we can partner with. Um, and then in, in quantum, again, we're making progress on several fronts there. Um, all, all exciting stuff. Um, as we said in an announcement, one of the things we've been particularly focused on is is sort of building the carbon materials through to a, a manufacturable process. You know, at the end of the day, we can't be doing sort of R and D building of devices if we want to scale something. So, you know, we've made significant advances on, you know, establishing a scalable process for making these carbon nanomaterials. Um, and that will allow us to fabricate a scaled system and, and actual devices based on the material. Um, so that's great. Um, on the other front, with some sort of key collaborations, um, you know, externally as well as as a sort of focus on activities in house, we've made real steps forward to getting to the readout of these quantum systems. So what we're going to have to do, which is incredibly difficult, is take our quantum nanomaterial and we have to address and read out a single electron that, that inhabits that system. And there's thousands to, to millions of electrons. Um, and as you can see, I think in the announcements, um, you know, the, the path we've chosen there, the technology to do that's based on superconducting resonator devices. And I would say the initial results that are coming out are really encouraging. And, and you know, we're taking the first few steps to be able to get to that point where we'll probe those single electrons, which will help us read out the quantum information. All right. So, yeah, there's a lot happening. Um, so, in, in, of course, you've got you know, two main sort of developments going on. But if we focus on biochip for uh, for a moment, because uh, it's probably fair to, to say that you know, the, sort of the time to market is shortest for, for biochip. Um, can you talk us through the, the main challenges for that development, what the work still to be done there, but also what the uh, the opportunity is for biochip once you get it to the market? Yeah, um, I mean, I can keep this pretty short. So, I mean, I think, you know, as I touched on the, the, the focus for the next six months to a year are getting to a point where we take concept and feasibility devices and advance them a bit further along the track track track, sorry, so we have real demonstrators that we can shop around that start to sort of look at repeatability, durability, and that that sort of thing. Um, so, you know, so that's the technical challenge. Um, you know, the challenge that will come to that is is trying to sort of hook onto and engage a first lead customer that will then direct us and help us sort of accelerate the development. So that, that'll be the key challenge on that side of things. Um, in terms of the biosensor, I mean, there's huge opportunities. I mean, um, if anybody does any research on this, you can see it's a it's a it's a huge market space. 
um, in the in the medical industry, there's there's a large push to sort of translate tests that would be done in a clinical setting through to um, through to the home to alleviate burdens on the healthcare system, but also sort of improve outcomes for for particular patients. Um, so initially, what we're looking at in the biosensor market is looking at something that would be a non-wearable device. So you know, who knows something that maybe looks like a rat test type thing that you can do at home. Um, and the you know, if you look at the sort of market forecasts there by 2030, you know, that market's as big as 25 to 40 billion US dollars. Um, so a huge market and, and Archer is going to aim to capture some some fraction of that. And obviously, the larger the, the percentage, the better. Yeah. OK. And so you mentioned uh, just a sorry, quick follow up here. You mentioned the um, you're looking to get a lead customer for that. Of course, without naming names, but what type of company would that be? If you can sort of talk a little bit about that, what sort of profile would that company need to have? Oh, well, that's a good question. Um, I mean, you know, it, it could it could be a range of things. It could be it could be a large pharmaceutical company that that benefits from having in in home testing, for example, that would then, you know, allow them to to sell more of their particular drug. Um, it could also be a, a medical sort of equipment supplier, right? That, that that wants to add you know this technology to their portfolio. Right. Okay. All right. So if we zoom in sort of, you know, very near term, what are your key priorities, say, for the next six months or so? Yeah. All right. Um, I mean, I'll switch it around and do the quantum first for that one. So, um, yeah, for the quantum program, I think the, the, the three, you know, the key priorities are, are completely technical. Um, the first will be continue to, to sort of develop our material systems. So, you know, we, you know, we talk in the news about our carbon nanomaterials, our carbon nano onions. Um, what we need to do is continue the work we've done over the last couple of years in improving properties that that that'll tailor it for quantum technologies, and and those include include things like the electron spin lifetime, for example. So that program is a is a is one of the one of the paths in Archer, and that'll continue to to sort of go on. Um, the second is to get to some of these key readout milestones that we've you know we've touched on in this interview, we've touched on in the announcements. Um, and we, we've made the, you know, we've made some sort of initial great steps towards that. But, you know, what we really want to be doing is hitting some of those milestones where we say, yep, we've we've built our readout circuitry. We've been able to sort of probe these um, nanomaterials and, and you know, we're reading out what's happening on the electrons. Um, so so for the quantum, two, two sort of key path points there that that will build to some um, manufacturable, scalable technology. Um in terms of the biochip, it's a bit because again because it's nearer term. I would say it's a it's a mix of technical sort of milestones as well as commercial ones. So, um, without being too repetitive, I think near term again we've got to we've got to get through these concept and feasibility tests and have some some demonstrator devices that we'll start you know either either working with development partners or or sort of starting to sort of introduce to customers um, or or both. Um, and even starting to engage regulatory, um, you know, institutions like the FDA in the in the in the US to sort of start laying the basis for the the, the steps for those re regulatory approvals over the next couple of years. Um, <clears throat> second would be again to um, you know continue the market analysis, which which we've been doing recently, and that's how we're you know we're being guided by these application use cases that we're working on. So. You know, it's it that will be an ongoing thing for the next two years, but continue to bolster up efforts there to make sure we're going after the right application space, you know, the right market, you know, assessing the competitors and and you know, eventually finding that, you know, working towards that killer application. Um, and then thirdly is the strategic partnerships that we're building up now and and you know, beginning projects with they're just going to be, you know, they're gonna be more and more important as we make steps forward. So you know, we've just got to continue building on that momentum so far with with those partners. All right. Sounds like you'll be very busy as a CTO, new CTO at, at Archer, Simon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, extremely um, busy. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time. It's It's been very interesting to sort of learn, you know, how the company moves moves forward from here. And uh, we'll definitely keep a close eye on, on future developments. Simon, thank you very much for your time. Yeah, no worries. Thank you, Mark.